This is a demonstration that's supposed to show that yeast cells do cellular respiration and that one of the products of cellular respiration is carbon dioxide. So in all four test tubes we have bromothymol blue solution at 40 degrees Celsius. That's a really good temperature for yeast cells to thrive and do cellular respiration. In the far right test tube we have bromothymol blue solution only. That's going to be our control group. In the test tube the second to the right we have sugar only. In the third test tube to the right we have yeast only and the one all the way at the left has yeast and sugar. Now what this is supposed to demonstrate is that yeast cells can do cellular respiration. They can take the sugar and they can react it with, if there's enough oxygen there, they can react it with the oxygen to release the energy to produce carbon dioxide gas and water. And now we are showing the test tubes at five times faster than normal playback. And you can see the test tube second to the left looks like it's producing some carbon dioxide, and it is. Um, there is some probably leftover sugar from the yeast when it was um, stored and dried up. But you can see on the far left, the one that had extra sugar added to it is really cellular respirating. It's producing carbon dioxide at a much faster rate because it has all that sugar. Um, so you can see it's a deep yellow. The ones on the right, obviously sugar only, and no sugar, no yeast cells aren't doing any kind of cellular respiration whatsoever. So again, it's supposed to show that yeast, when they have sugar and oxygen, they can take that, react it, unlock the energy that's in sugar to make carbon dioxide. That's why the solution turned yellow and water. They can use that energy for themselves to use.